Mm. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Now understand this that there are two areas that do not immediately change when you become a child of God. Uh -huh. There's two areas and you don't mean to change. I, I mean, I, I believe in total deliverance. I do believe in that. But there are two areas in the life that does not immediately change. Watch this. Watch this. Look at this. Even though when we got saved, according to John chapter 5 and verse 24, we passed from death to life immediately. Watch this. But there's two areas that does not change immediately. Number one, your soul does not change immediately. Uh, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then the second thing that does not change immediately is your physically physical body, which is the flesh. See, these become two of the hottest battlegrounds in your life. Mm -hmm. And as your relationship with God grows, it will be more and more evident that your soulish part, which is your mind, your will, and your intellect, your emotions, is the enemy's focal point of attack. We as believers must overcome these two areas of our lives through the word of God. We know that Jesus is our deliverer, deliverer but there are two laws that are at work within us. Uh, our inward man, our spiritual man, delights or seek after the law of God. Mm -hmm. The war against the law of our mind is waged in the mind of the believer. And it's 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, 366 on the leap year. Uh -huh. Our body is naturally designed to fulfill the lust of this world, while our spirit desires to go after the ways of God. Mm -hmm. Look at what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 about the warfare that we wage in our mind. He said, but though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Mm -hmm. Paul is saying that although we live in the world, it is no worldly warfare that we are waging. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Paul said that although we live in the world, it is no worldly warfare that we are waging. Although we are human, it is in no human strength that we fight our battles. Yes. Okay. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. See, our battle is to bring down every barrier. Yes. Every deceptive fantasy. Yes. All speculations mm -hmm. and every imposing defense that men erect against the true knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. Then Paul said, and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience yes. of Christ. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, God has given us, according to his word, the proper weapons to deploy any at any given time in our life to help us cast down negative imagination. Uh -huh. And bring every thought into obedience to Christ. You don't believe me? Come here, Paul. Let me let me tell you what Paul said. Paul said in Hebrews chapter four, verses twelve to thirteen, for the word of God is quick. Yes. Uh, it's living. It's alive. That's what they, that's what they quick mean. It's living and it's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing unto the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. So the first thing we want to establish right here, the first thing is that the first thing we must do is cast down all imaginations and strongholds. Okay. All right? Amen. God has given us weapons to win the battle against the enemy of our mind. Yes. The weapons that God gives us are not carnal. They are not of this world, but, somebody say but. but. They are mighty through God with a definite purpose to pull down the enemy's stronghold. Uh -huh. uh, but before we can cast down anything, we must know the authority that we have to cast down these high things that exalt them.
themselves above the knowledge of God. Let me tell you, let me, let me say this like this. When you don't know who you are as it relates to your relationship with God, you can try casting down anything you want to. It ain't gonna work. It ain't, it ain't no work. See, the problem with the people of God who really don't know who they really are in God is that you have spent in your you have spent all your life trying to bluff the devil. Mm. Send it, man. You can't bluff the devil. But that's what you do. You try to bluff, bluff the devil because what you're doing is that you try to bluff them in front of everybody. Because you're trying to convince these folks that have no heaven and hell to put you in that you have arrived. And now what you have did is that you have raised a war that you ain't ready for. Because the devil is like some of these folks that you tried to you tried to bluff in high school and try to bluff in school. That you try you you you, you want to show out in front of folks. And you want to act all tough and bad in front of people, but then when everybody goes, that person sees you in the hall. It's just you and that person. Now it's a totally different. Can we just talk this thing out now? And what you find yourself doing is that you trying to talk your way out of the butt women that the devil get ready to put on you. And what the devil tells you, you started it. I'm going to finish it. So you find yourself bluffing. And the devil ain't playing with you. And so the devil decides to put a whooping on you. And all things you're trying to do now, you're trying to pull down something that you don't even know what you're pulling down. Help us. Thank you, Father. So look at this. Look at this. Look at this. The weapon that God gives us are not common. Uh, but before we can cast down anything, we must know the authority that we have to cast down these high things that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. The enemy is trying to come against God's will and purpose for your life. Look at this. It's a mind thing. It's all in the mind. Look at your neighbor and say, it's a mind thing. See, we have folks in the church who, who, who have allowed religious tradition and the things of this world to stop them from being fed and stop them from being led by God's Spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah that's some stuff that we have been taught as a little child that has literally destroyed you or destroyed you because you would not release your mind to get a full understanding of what God really wants to do in your life. Uh -huh. I come from a traditional church. I grew up in a traditional church. Folks told me I was going to hell because I had my button on my shirt that was open one time. Well, the button was broke. That's why I was on that. Oh, <laughs> why my shirt was open. <laughs> Person told me that I'm on my way to hell. <laughs> then I had someone to tell me because I won't wear ties that I was going to hell. Had me scared to death because I didn't wear a tie. What do a tie got to do with my Christianity? What does a tie have to do with my spirituality? Because if the truth be told, if that means that I got to wear a tie to go to heaven, well, y'all y'all know where I'm going then. Because I don't like wearing ties. But religious tradition has destroyed us because we have, we have an understanding that is not righteous. Now let me, let, me, let, me, let me help somebody with this because you have what you call personal scruples. See, if God, the Bible says, for he that knoweth to do right and for him, not the church, not, not your brother next to you, not your sister next to you, not your family, it says for he that knoweth to do right and for him not to do it, for, to him. You have to understand that, that, that to him, to her, is a secret. So if God has told you that going to the movies for you is a sin, 
Don't put that on me. God talked to you. He didn't talk to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up? Don't put your personal scruples on me that I'm going to hell because I don't like going to the movies anyway, but I'm just simply saying, don't put that on me because yeah. God told these religious traditions is destroying the body of Christ because if God spoke to you, surely if he can speak to you, he'll speak to me too. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't so far fed that God can't talk to me. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, went down to Bay Ridge Christian College and, and had our academic dean told us that playing baseball was a sin. I said, we can't do none at this school. <laughs> Everything we do is a sin. <laughs> It don't matter. They just drinking Coca Cola. Y'all know y'all go to hell. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> They said drinking Coca Cola is a sin. When they said red makeup is a sin, and how many you know it's a necessity? Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> It's a necessity. My brother and I, we went to New York City one time, and, and, and my boss, my boss, she's a white lady, and 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 and, and we went to New York drive for furniture. She was talking to me outside the window, and Lord, no, Lord knows I didn't know who that was. Who is that ugly woman that's up there trying to speak to her? I mean, she looks, she looks like a ghost. Makeup is a necessity. <laughs> but what, I'm, what I want us to understand is that all of this revelation that God has given you, understand he's given it to you. Don't put that on me. He gave it to you. So if he told you not to do it, he's not telling you to tell me I can't do it. So religious traditions have crippled the church because when God tells you something, you think that it's for the whole body. No, if he's going to tell you for the whole body, I'm quite sure the wording would be this is for the body. Look at this. Look, look, look at this. So he said, we got folks in the church who allow religious traditions and the things of this world to stop them from being fed and stop them from being led by God's word. That's why they find themselves confused, frustrated and defeated. With this mindset, they find themselves falling prey to the enemy devices. So when the enemy brings things into their minds that is contrary to God's plan for their lives, we can't cast it down. Because our minds are so confused. Now use this illustration one time about a computer. If you got so much junk in your computer, and the junk in your computer is taking up all your memory, then you're not going to process anything that good that you need. Why? Because what your computer will tell you, you don't have enough available space. So if your mind has been bogged down with the traditions of this world and all these other things, that when, when it's time for you, when you hear something that's contrary to what you already know, and you know that you need to apply this to your life, you can't cast it down. Why? Because you got too much junk. Too much junk in your mind that you cannot process what God really wants to say to you because you don't have enough available space. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. Some of us who think that we are all dead and a bag of chips only go to a certain level of growth in our walk with Christ because we feel like we have matured spiritually. We got a whole lot of Spiritual dummies in this church. Uh -huh. Because 
we, we feel like that we have arrived. Mm. Thank God. And then you have the audacity to stick your nose up mm. Mm. at folks who really trying to walk. Mm. Failing to realize that, hey, yeah. not long ago, I was right there myself. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory. I was right there myself. Mm. Oh. Wow. Ain't nobody come out, nobody came out of their mother's womb learning everything right there in the day. It was, it was a process. Yeah. None of us are on the same level in our spiritual walk with God. None of us. Because if we all were, this church would be filled to the max. The reason why I say that because some of you are struggling to get here yourself. To try to bring somebody with you is far fetched. <laughs> What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Watch this. You got to understand that you must continue to grow spiritually so that you can learn in every situation how to cast down the thoughts that the devil presents to your mind. Yeah. Keep your mind covered with the word of God. Yeah. You got to put the jet down, though. Yeah. You got to put everything down. You got to, you got to put soap off and digest down. You got to put down the sports magazine. You got to put down people magazine and keep your mind covered with the word of of God. Our lives is shaped by the information we receive. Our minds are shaped by the information that we receive. The opinions, the teaching, the doctrine, the lifestyle we live. The moment we are born, we immediately begin to be shaped by those who are around us. Uh -huh. All of these influences must be analyzed. They must be sorted. They must be accepted or Rejected. Mm -hmm. They all work to build up our growth. Mm -hmm. When a child grows up, the parent during the early part of their life, the parent plays, plays close attention to the development of their child. Mm -hmm. If the legs are not growing properly, we don't wait till they get grown That's right. to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do something about it at the beginning stage. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -huh. See, you got to understand, everything that you consume in your life has to be analyzed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, you got to stop taking everybody's word for something. Amen. Especially if you don't know it yourself. Let me tell you something. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. So you got to stop taking everybody's word. I don't care if they do tell you they profit the so-and-so. I don't care if they tell you you that bitch is so-and-so. You got to analyze every word that comes out of people's mouth that trying to give a word to you. You better analyze that. You better find out the source of it, where it comes from. That's why I tell you, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I'm teaching or preaching the word of God, I give you scripture. You read the scripture for yourself. Don't take my word for it. If Eve would have knew the word, written really for herself, she would never got tripped up. Because the enemy took the same word that she read. That's why I said read the word of God. It's just, that's just not good just by itself. If you don't understand what you read, you just read. That's why I'm not impressed by folks that get up and talk about, I done read three or four chapters this day. I done read six or seven chapters at nighttime. I done read the Bible in the whole year. My question is, did you understand it? Uh -huh. Did you understand what you read? Because if you understand what you read, then your life of it exemplify what you done read. Yes, yeah. understand. Oh, sure enough. Because if you read, if you understand what you read, you'll stop cussing. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That if you understood. <laughs> if you read, if you understood what it said, you'll stop changing. If you really understood. Uh -huh. You read what David said created me a clean heart. You read it if you really understood. But just read the word of God. It's not just, it's not good enough by itself. You must get an understanding. I'm ready that you read one script a day and get an understanding of it. You keep reading till you get an understanding. 
Well, I ain't impressed that you done read the word of God. I've I, I been saved all these years. I ain't read the whole Bible. Amen. Come on, I ain't scared to tell. Come on, Bishop. Ooh, ooh. There's some parts that it just don't make no sense to me. Come on, Bishop. There's, if I can't pronounce the name, I can't get no understanding of it. Let me just tell you. I'm, I'm just going to tell you. I, I just I just really start to understand what that dust and down me. I'm just trying to help. Some of y'all been wondering what it was to. So the moment that we are born, we immediately begin to be shaped by those around us. All of these influences must be analyzed, they must be sorted, they must be accepted or rejected. They all work to build up our growth. Yes. Look at this. There is no difference between us being born physically and us being born spiritually. There is no difference. The input you receive will determine your growth in every aspect of your life. You live or die by the words you receive, the words you accept, and exalt over your life, as well as the words you speak over your own life. Solomon tells us in, in, in Proverbs 18 and 21 that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Every day you wake up, you are faced with thoughts, you are faced with ideas, and you are faced with suggestions from what you see and what you hear. You have to decide what to believe and what to receive in your mind to exalt in your life. You all by yourself control this part of your life. You control this part. God has given you the authority and control over this area of your life. You choose rather to receive or reject what thoughts that comes through your mind. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something. You cannot stop the thoughts from coming. It's true. I don't care what you do, that's what them holes are there for. You can't stop them from coming through your ears. You can't stop what you hear. Put all the cotton balls you want to in your ear. You're not going to stop things. You're not going to stop yourself from hearing things. When it comes through your ear, it goes through your, your mind. But you can stop it from resting there. You can stop it from resting. So you can't stop it from coming through. Watch this. Watch this. What, whatever you receive in your mind can be good, but also it can be detrimental to your growth. Yeah. As a mature creature in Christ, mm -hmm. you must understand that you will be presented with negative thoughts regardless of how holy and sanctified you are. I don't care how long you've been saying, you ain't going to tell me you haven't. He ain't had no in, impure thoughts. So come on now. Right. So right. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Right. Not only the devil is a lie, you want to. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. You must understand that you will be presented with negative thoughts regardless of how holy and sanctified you are, regardless of how many years you've been saved, regardless of how many times you've been baptized, regardless of how many times you have read the Bible, regardless of how many times you've been filled with the Spirit of God, you will be presented with negative thoughts about you and others, and you will have to determine what you are going to do with the thoughts that have come in your mind. You must remember that the key to living victoriously is to remember that your thoughts are controlled by the input you receive and what you accept as the truth. Look what Solomon says in Proverbs 23 and verse 7. Solomon lets us know that a person is determined by his thoughts. He said, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. Understand that, that you can be presented with the thoughts, but what you do with that thought determines your future. Uh -huh. It determines your physical, mental, and
and spiritual state of being. See, you are the deciding factor. It is up to you to accept it or reject it. Mm -hmm. Somebody once said that a person that I will become within the next few years is determined by the books I read, mm -hmm. the things I listen to, mm -hmm. and the people I associate myself with today. Mm -hmm. Y'all just missed that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What it say? You, what you will become in the next few years, yes. have to start now. Yes. By the books I read, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not the comic book. Mm. When the last time you've been to the library and picked up a book? When was the, when was the last time you don't order been to the Christian bookstore and got a book? When was the last time you read the Word of God? What I'm going to become in the next three years is determined by the books I read, the things I listen to, and the people I associate myself with today. Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20, that he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So my question this morning is how do you see yourself? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27 states that God created man in his own image. As a result of that, man became the highest being created on this earth. Because of it, you have become the highest being created on this earth. The Bible says that we was made a little lower than the angels. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This has to do with the imagination of a person. The image you have of yourself is one of the most important indicators of growth in your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. How you imagine yourself determines whether you please God or not. Amen. And whether or not you will be successful in this life. Mm -hmm. How you look at you will determine your level of success in this life. Point number two. Thank you. I only got two points. I'm going to sit down. Ask yourself the question. How do God see me? Wow. Numbers chapter 13. Verse 33. Numbers chapter 13. Verse 33. The children of Israel were faced with entering Canaan. And taking what God has said belonged to them. God has called the children of Israel strong and courageous. You got to look at this. This is what God said. God called the children of Israel strong and courageous. Right. And he told them that he had given them the land. Mm -hmm. That he promised them that flowed with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. You all got to look at this. God, first of all, called them strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. And then he said... I'm giving you, I have given you the land that I promised you. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm strong and I'm courageous. Mm -hmm. Then he said, I've already given you yes. what I promised you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if God has already given you Hallelujah. what he has promised you, uh -huh. then it's already yours. Yes. I ain't yes. got to ask him for nothing. Only thing that he tells them now, after he had told them they're strong and courageous, and that he had given them the land that he promised them. He said, now go and possess it. Mm -hmm. Wow. My, my, my. <laughs> this is where a whole lot of people fail right here. Mm -hmm. Is that you've been promised something. Mm -hmm. God had already told you that you qualified. Mm -hmm. All thing you got to do now is go. Mm -hmm. Why is it so hard for the people of God to put one foot behind the other? If he had already told me I'm strong and courageous, and he had told me it's already mine, mm -hmm. only thing I got to do now is go. Oh, that's it. Why is it so hard for me to tell my mind to go? Mm -hmm. Watch this. Look at this. So he says, he says, he tells them to go. God told them that as his children, they should have it and that he will fight for them. All of these things God 
God said, God said, you're strong and you're courageous. He said, I'm giving you what I promise you. Then he said, if an opposition comes up against you, I fight for you. The only thing that they had to do was to go and possess it. Now, if God said it, that means that the promise had to be fulfilled because God cannot lie. Amen. Uh, but look at this. God said that the children of Israel were strong and courageous, but in verse 33, the people, not God. Y'all looking at verse 33? We get ready to read that now. The people, not God, but the people imagined themselves as grasshoppers. Entirely different from what God called me. God said you're strong and courageous, and you imagine yourself as a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. Silly rabbit. <laughs> God called you one thing, but your mind has convinced you that you're something totally different. The creator, the one who created you, called you one thing, but you allowed your mind to tell you you're something different. Oh my God. God said, you're saved. You're sanctified. Filled with the Holy Spirit. But your mind tells you that you, you're not. Mm. Have convinced you that you're not. God tells you that you're blessed. But your mind tells you that you're cursed. God tells you that you're victorious, but your mind tells you that you're defeated. Mm -hmm. That's why it's dangerous not to have a covering for your mind. Uh -huh. yeah. Ooh, you messed up. You ain't got nobody to control. If, if God ain't going to control this for you, you are a danger to yourself because you